And you're watching Breakfast Extra right here on New Central TV. This time we're going to take a look at a somber topic as we discuss the recent passing of a Nollywood actor, Junior Pope. Now his death has sent shockwaves through the industry, prompting a re-evaluation of safety standards on Nollywood sets. And to join us now to discuss and also to explore this tragic event and its implication for the Nigerian film industry, uh, we're joined by Doris Okorie. She is uh, an actress and also uh, we're also joined by Evelyn uh, John Oda. She's also a producer, a crew member and actress as well. Welcome, ladies. Good Thank to have you. all of you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, would you like me to start with a question? Yes, sir. Very, very excited. <laughs> now, I, I wanted to ask each of you, um, but following this tragic incident uh, with uh, the uh, unfortunate passing of um, Junior Pope, which has got everybody sad and everybody's really sad, um, there's been a ban on Riverine movie productions highlighting the need for stricter safety measures in the industry. Um, we want to find out exactly was there any sort of perhaps maybe consideration given to safety from before now in Nollywood generally? Uh, was there anything at all? Did we have a facility, the capacity even, to have safety measures as a, a checklist on our che uh, or check on our checklist? Yeah, on production before? sets. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you, Doris. Okay. So for me as an actor, I mean, I have crossed the water to go shoot, mm -hmm. I think twice. Mm -hmm. And both times I was protected. I had my yeah. safety jacket. And then um, for the first time, it was a local canoe, like mm -hmm. what Junior Pope was on. Dug out. And then the second time it was an actual um, proper boat that mm -hmm. we used. And but both times, you know, we had on our sets, we had um, medic, medics, and then we had our life jackets on. So. Mm. so these are considerations that are put in place. Yes. But in signing your contract or any of that, are there any terms that you must sign that have to do with safety at all? Yes. Or even life insurance. insurance. So sometimes the contracts, to be honest, um, remove productions from any form of... Liability. Inc yes, incidents mm. happen. Yes, mm. sometimes, most times. You see, right, I mean, everything is a producer. And yeah. Mm -hmm. She draws up most of those contracts as well. So, Evelyn, you fantastic. tell us from your own point so, of view. So, um, basically, um, I really do not know what you know. There is a theme between Asabawood and Nollywood. So, I really mm. don't know if they are in the same line with what we do. What we it's do here in Lagos. It's all Nollywood now. We know it as Nollywood. But <laughs> then we, we understand where we're yes. coming from. Please right? make us understand as and well. So, so basically, I don't know the structure. Mm -hmm. Right, because in every production there should be a structure. I don't know the structure there in Asaba, what they do, but majority of the structures there that I've heard about, I'm cut not in line with, you know. But in production, we have like safety measures before you even start during pre production. You have to make sure your medic is on set, like an actual practitioner, medical practitioner mm -hmm. is on set with you guys. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be doing anything that is regarding or it, that involves water, rivers, or anything, we know that we go extra mile having a medic on set, but having a lifeguard, having um, first aid on set, people that are well known to do CPRs, mm -hmm. right? And all of that. And the production goes all the way, goes the extra mile to make sure that if I'm going to be shooting at this location, and we're going to be using it like a ferry or a boat or whatever it is. Do you have life jackets? Do you have all of that? So that's the production work. So when the production sees that that location in particular don't have all of that, we provide them. Do we have to buy these things? Do we have to go the extra mile? Because if we're shooting on the roads, we get cones, traffic cones. We mm -hmm. literally rent traffic cones because these are safety measures. If you're shooting on the road and people are driving and they don't mm -hmm. see these things, they can just assume that nothing, nothing is, is happening on. and there's some sort of accident. But these are measures you put in place yes. by producers. Exactly. What about the AG and the Actors Guild yeah. in Nigeria? Um, are there protocols that one must follow as a producer to and, ensure? And how do they even enforce it to begin with? That's very important because we've seen situations again, again, and time again, especially with Nollywood. Because Sorry, yeah. Hollywood. Hollywood yeah. is, a sta and is, is pretty much standard. the standard yes. you know, in terms of best practices yes. for the industry. Yes. So, how then does AGN enforce it? Because this, I mean, some persons are arguing that the press release that they gave on uh, the production and the producer, uh, Miss Luke, is, is, is somewhat reactionary, mm. given what has happened. That there should have been some sort of enforcement that even when they're not there, it is strictly abide by this rule or no production at all. Okay, so regarding that, it's a bit dicey because <laughs> there is a guild, but at the same time, we are not really seeing the impact 
of the guild in the industry as a whole. Yes, there, there, there might be sectors where they are working, but if you ask the majority creative in the industry that, do you know about a guild? A lot of them will tell you no. Mm -hmm. Because if there is a guild, there are like procedures, there are like protocols, mm. there are like rules and regulations mm. that you should be aware of even before you enter into the industry. So you're coming into the industry and like, oh, this is what we do. We don't collect this certain amount. You have to have this. Um, there will be a protocol officer that will come to every production to make sure that everything that is supposed to be in line with mm -hmm. the guild's rules and regulation is in check. But we don't have all of that. We have independent producers that are doing things that mm. are also probably from what they've learned in film school, you know, and trying to fine tune all of those things to make sure everybody is in accordance, right, mm. with the things that they've learned to make sure their name, the production name as well, is not being tainted. Mm. Mm. But if the guild is not really present as much and we just all of a sudden, because one tragedy just happened, you're like everywhere, we're trying seeing you and we're like... Work. Where have you people been? Mm -hmm. yeah. Where, where, where is the guild? So you're saying that the guild, oftentimes, is just in in a lack of a better word, is just uh, a name. It's just a name. Just a name. Yeah. A lot of people in the creative don't even know that about these guild. things. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of questions like, "What's the actors' guild about? Where mm. have you people been? What do we do there? Yes. Do we have producers' guild? Do mm. we have directors' guild? I mean, because so, when you see in Hollywood as well, um, the the Screen Association, sad. Yes. sad mm -hmm. They were standard when it comes to, you know, fighting for what was right for them in terms of the residual um, paychecks mm. on works that they've done before. And there was no Oscar, I think it was last year or two years yes. ago, mm. until something had to be done. And you saw all actors, big names and even up and coming yeah. and even indie actors, and as well as producers walking off set because of, of the, the strikes. So you're telling me that AGN is, don't, doesn't have that much clout as they there is no they they seem to be like I would I would say Doris wants to say something yeah, hold on hey, hold on you finish I, I would say that there is there is no force mm. there can be a force right and it's not really visible but when there is an actual force where yeah. there are protocols there's an order you don't start a production if they've not fact checked everything yeah. that you're supposed mm -hmm. to do during pre-production tell you what yeah um, yeah Doris Mm -hmm. While you are responding to that, there's also something I wanted to ask regarding the instance of Gina Pope's death now. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the way information was managed. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you as an actor. The way information was managed and also the instance itself. Could there, be, could there have been anything done better regarding yeah. information management and that instance? What could have been done better? Well, for me, I just feel like the entire thing was just handled poorly. Yeah. Um, seeing that, I mean, people in power, the people in power were the ones who even leaked the video of mm. this man's corpse. corpse. It was in a very bad way. It was mm -hmm. bad. It was really bad. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of communication, at some point, we were not even sure what was going on. There was a lot happening. When the news first broke, I was like, I hope this is some form of clout to Hoax. get the movie out there. I just hope. And then we hear he's alive. We, we, we were not even sure what was going on. Mm. So I feel like social media is great, but as a body, to be honest, like she said, we have the Asaba wood, right? Mm. And I wouldn't necessarily, because I read comments and people go on to say, oh, but this movie wasn't shot in Asaba, they shoot in Enugu, they shoot in mm. Anambra, they shoot in Imo State. Fine, but they've tagged it as Asaba wood. I feel like they have more of the Asian attention, to okay. be honest. Mm. I'm speaking as an actor because I know that a few times when I started out, you know, I've been to auditions where they would say to register, but I never was interested. Yeah, then there is that. Yes. You have to, to register be, to yes, be you have in to, a movie. Yes, you have, have to, to register. You. you have to register to be in the guild. Oh, in the guild. Right? Okay. And then sometimes, in some instances, you have to pay to be in a movie. I don't see how that. Why? Works. How is that? How does that make sense? I don't sense? see how that works, how that works for me. Do you understand? I don't see how that works. I mean, Judy, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have to pay to be mm -hmm. on this show. Yeah, <laughs> like, you have to pay. Like, yeah. you, have to pay yeah. Well, yeah, well, you do you know have to pay saying. me to be on it. Yeah, yeah well, so, you know, it's just it's just wild that <laughs> you have a body, and I feel like the best people that could have gotten the proper information to pass mm -hmm. should have been them. Yeah, right. And not just random people. Yeah, there was right. a video that leaked yesterday of somebody. Making a video of, of the, the corpse. corpse in a uh, 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 
flatbed. And then there was somebody above making a video of the person, of the person who was making, making a video. video. It, it's oh, look, <laughs> it's, um, sad. it's sad and mm -hmm. and and wild as well. And I, I I would also argue that social media and our use of social media and, and how it has altered our brains and how we use it yeah. also affects what we see mm -hmm. in terms of trends and how news is broken, right? But you're an actress, mm -hmm. and you were once an actress and now a producer. The two of you understand it from an actor's point of view, working in big productions, small productions, uh, free-to-air productions as well yeah. as that, and YouTube. You also have worked as producer. I want you to talk about the hidden wrongs of, the, of this industry and the ecosystem that doesn't meet the eye that we don't see, that the struggles that you have, that AGN may not be able to fix or can be able to fix, but are unable to fix, as well as uh, those small things that are of its own cause because of the, the powers that be. So safety as an actor is number one. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes you, we get call times for, what, seven, eight, nine? And then we get to shoot until 12. I've shot 24 hours before, 6 mm. a.m. to 6 a.m. the very next day. Cool. It's, it's normal. It's bad, but it's normal. It's not strange. So you shoot into 3 a.m. And there is no provision for you where you sleep, how you get home. That is just really just ridiculous. There are some producers I really have to applaud where once they, are, once they see that this production is going to go into the night, they are already prepping. Evelyn is one of those people. Mm. Once she's seen that, oh, it's looking like this is going Do to be... Do you want to mention any names that are not considerate at all? Well... Mention names. Um, Name the names. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't... Because, of course, sometimes we have like a, an entire... Um, hierarchy there's mm. the ep who brings the money okay. then there is like the live so you can't producer. well because at the end of the day we can't no, no to be honest at the end of the day the line producer might be human to mm. say yo doris cannot go back home it's late and put a call through and then the ep will okay. say see there's no money for that we do not there's no budget ah. for that so you can't really really point at anyone to be very honest so i would not want to say oh this production i can only categorically yeah. say that this person looked out for me, I can now mention those names. Doris, uh, and of course, Evelyn, yeah. thank you ladies. For thank you ladies us. for coming on. We, we do you. appreciate for you guys coming on. And I've been watching you. I cannot wait for more to <laughs> come when it comes to all that you've been doing. Well <laughs> then, you. and also to Evelyn, you as well. You.